Hey everyone, it's Guilherme, and in this video we are going to see how we can implement a 2D camera that keeps multiple targets in sight by following them and also zooming in and out when needed using Godot version 3.1. Let's begin by playing our game. We have two players and I can control both of them using either WASD or the arrow keys. This way I can move one far away from the other and vice versa. So we can see how the camera reacts to the movement of the players and as you can see the camera follows them trying to keep looking at the center of the screen or at the center point between both of them and at the same time we also control our zoom so we can zoom in and out depending on the position that the players are and how far away they are from each other and of course this camera also works with multiple targets so if we like to we could also add more than just two players we could work with how many we want to and by looking at the demo, we can also see that we have some offset here on the borders. The players cannot go out of the screen, either to the side or to the bottom or to the top. For us to better understand how this is working, I'm going to activate the debug mode on our follow camera. And here you can see that we draw a rectangle between our players. And when they move, we update this rectangle. And the center point here is where the camera tries to stay at. And by moving the players far away from each other, you can see that the rectangle expands and if we move closer to each other, the rectangle shrinks until we get to a point where we cannot shrink anymore because that's the zoom that we defined that we want to stay at. If we'd like to, as I said before, we could also add one more player here and I'm just going to move it to the center of the screen. Press play again. And here we can see how the camera behaves when we have more than one point to follow. Once again, it's going to try to stay at the middle between all of them. And again, shrink and expand based on the position of the targets. So in sum, what our script is doing is trying to draw a rectangle that is going to encapsulate all of the targets inside of it and then find the middle point inside of that rectangle and follow it and also update our rectangle when needed. Here on the game scene, as you can see, all of our players are children of our follower camera. And as we saw previously, that's how it works. It tries to follow its children. But this scene is not coupled to its children. This means that we can easily go to its scene and run it without having any children for it to follow. On the camera scene, we can define its offset, which are the offset between the borders that we saw previously. And also we can activate and deactivate our debug mode, which when activated is going to draw the rectangle that we saw previously when we were playing the game. Now let's open the follower camera script. To create those rectangles, we are using those rect to type and in our ready function, we get a reference to our viewport rect because we're going to need it later. And we also set our process to false in case our children is lesser than one. Now here on the process function is where we are going to start moving our camera and also changing the value of our zoom. So we begin by creating a new rect to at the position of our first child with a size of zero. And for each child that this camera has, we're going to expand our camera rectangle by passing to it the global position of this child. When we are done creating our rectangle, we are going to set our offset to the return value of our calculate center. This is going to calculate the center position of our rectangle. This is why we are passing to it the camera rect. And we are going to calculate our zoom using our camera rect and the size of our viewport rect. And in the case that we are in debug mode, we are going to call update, which is going to trigger another draw call as we are using the draw function to draw the rectangle and also the center of that rectangle. If we were not doing this, our draw function would not be called again. And because of that, we wouldn't be able to see our debug rectangle being updated. Now on the calculate center function, we receive the rect that we want to calculate the center of and we return a vector two from the function, which for the x is the x position of this rectangle plus its width divided by two and the same for the y value. On the calculate zoom function, we are once again returning a vector two and as we saw previously, we are receiving the camera rect that we calculated in our process function and also the viewport size that we are getting from our viewport rect. And here we create a variable called max zoom. And that is because when we are using the zoom functionality of our camera, if for some reason the value of our zoom in the X is different than the value of the Y, we are going to get a different aspect ratio and we are going to see some artifacts on our art. So what we do to make sure that this is not happening is to set the maximum zoom that we are calculating, which could be either on the X or the Y. And we set that zoom to be the zoom that we are going to set in our camera. And to calculate the zoom, we are calculating both the zoom for our Y and for our X. And for both of them, we are getting the maximum value between one, which is the minimum zoom that we want to have, and the width of our rect divided by the width of our viewport 
plus the offset that we defined on our exporter variable. And the same is done for the y value, but instead of the width, we are using the height. So between those two values, we are going to get the one which is greater. And then we are going to return a vector2 with the same value for the x and for the y. And finally, we get to the draw function, which once again is being called on every frame if you have the debug mode activated by calling update. And because draw is called on the start of our game, we also check here if we are not on debug mode. And if we are not, we are going to return from the function. If not, we are going to draw a rectangle by taking the camera rectangle and setting it to a color of white. And we're also going to draw a circle, which is going to be right in the center of that rectangle, which again is the same position that our camera is following. And with this, our follower camera is done and you can just add children to it and it's going to try to find the best position to follow them. Here, we are using a top-down game as an example, but you can use the same camera for all sorts of different games in 2D. For instance, platforming games, fighting games, racing games, you name it. And in the next video, we are going to create the same mechanism, but this time in a 3D game using a really similar approach. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. As always, you can find this project on GitHub, and I'll see you in the next video.